Thank you. Hi to Si Karfa, to Si Mubtasim, my old classmate, uh, to Si Madani, Si Ali, Si Mamoun, and all the colleagues in Fez. Very happy to be with you. Uh, back you. to our uh, topic. Um, I would say it's a pity that um, we needed um, COVID-19 to realize the importance of, uh, of ICTs in, 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 in teaching. Um, of course, as, as was mentioned in the presentation, that uh, there were many programs in the past where decision makers were aware of the importance of, of uh, the use of ICTs, and we remember programs like Gini program and um, um, uh, Nafida and so on. But as we know, they were not that successful. And uh, but who's responsible for this failure? I would say that we are all responsible for this failure. First, decision makers, whose decisions are always from above and uh, they did not involve enough teachers. Uh, teachers are also responsible because uh, as humans, uh, we are lazy, uh, resisting to change many uh, teachers up to now resist even using uh, data shows in their classrooms. There is that fear from technology. And I would join here one of our colleagues who said that uh, all teachers uh, have more problems than uh, uh, younger ones. We have also the problem of, uh, of our universities where we have many um, uh, students. So so with that, it's a responsibility which she shared. But I would, uh, to answer one of the students' questions, uh, whether the job of teaching is about to die, I would say not yet. But I think that uh, we teachers, from now on, we need to realize, yes, face-to-face -face teaching is very important. Um, uh, there is that feeling that eye contact with your with your with your students. Uh, uh, you don't need to say to your students, "Do you understand?" You need just to look at them, and um, um, and you you know that they don't understand. It's something that we lack when we use uh, ICTs. Uh, and I would say that when you you use those ICTs, it's like if you're cloning yourself. Uh, when you give a face-to-face -face, uh, course, for example, uh, when you finish your session, I mean, uh, and if we take in our classrooms uh, where we have so many students and the uh, high rate of absenteeism, it would be perfect if uh, teachers uh, tape or videotape their lessons and put them on of the university or even YouTube cannot imagine uh, uh, how help those videos will be those who for some reason will not be uh, will not able will not uh, able to, to attend your course and also the possibility to, to see and see again the the, 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 the lesson which will help students uh, be autonomous in their learning process because this is what we are would like to teach our students to be independent and not to be relying on on uh, being with their teachers all the time so concerning my 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 short experience in in um, teaching uh, i would share what uh, my friend mamun said i mean is that when you teach uh, and you cannot see uh, your students. We have that problem that some students sometimes you have their names. For example, you can say, giving just an, a number. For example, you can have forty people, but how many interact with you? You can have five or six. The others either have problems of internet connections. We can see that some students are uh, connecting, reconnecting. Uh, others uh, fear again speaking in, in public. Uh, Others uh, simply don't want to, to participate, and they would say that their microphones uh, are, uh, are not working, which is not always uh, the case. And what I have remarked is, my, is that my TTT was too high. My teacher t talking time was too high compared to uh, when I'm teaching face-to-face, -face. like what, 
when I have uh, given some courses that uh, were broadcasted in, in um, uh, the channel Riyadhiyah, uh, I realized that a course of uh, 30 minutes uh, videotaped equal, was equal to a course that I used to give face-to-face -face in, in, in four hours or, or six hours. That shows the big difference from uh, teaching uh, uh, online uh, or broadcasting a video or teaching face to face. Uh, so I think that uh, to, to conclude, I think that uh, teachers, decision makers now are all aware of the importance of the inclusion. Uh, I think that uh, there is no way, I mean, uh, if you don't want to use, like if you want to face globalization and to face modernism and to face uh, modernity, I think that we have to all of us, uh, hopefully after uh, going back to our classes, to think of combining face-to-face -face courses with uh, uh, online courses. And thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll come to see Aksbi. Uh, uh, now I give the floor to my friend and colleague, C. Tayyip Gordo from the Department of English, the Faculty of Letters and Human, Science, uh, Human Sciences, Dara Meres. C. Tayyip. Uh, hi. Hi, Sandra Rahim. I, I thank you very much for uh, inviting uh, our esteemed friend and teacher, Sir uh, Imjid um, uh, I would like just to say that it's not only a pleasure listening to you but it's also an honor and the real honor that I have in uh, listening to your presentation and to your remarks. By the way, I am a real listener. Um, by the way, I am, uh, <laughs> I follow your twitch yet and I don't know whether you are, <laughs> are making new ones or not. Um, on Facebook, of course. Uh, so here, uh, the question of pedagogy uh, and man replaced by, uh, by, uh, by ICT, I think that it is, uh, uh, as uh, Sebnamjid has answered that, it's not, a, it's not either or, it is just a, a complementarity. I have uh, started teaching in 92, back in 1992, and we didn't have computers back then. And there was the, I feel like the introduction of the call and Mr. Buzian has mentioned that computer assisted language Ooh. learning. And the same question was uh, again and again asked, shall the computer replace the, uh, the teacher and then uh, the internet and then now the new media or what we call social media and these new applications. I think that the question of man uh, replaced by or being replaced by the uh, technology in general is uh, not yet reached in this space. So what's the job or the task for teachers is to, to focus on the methodology, on the pedagogy, and think of technology as a tool to help them in reaching uh, the, the, the real goal. So what is the real goal is to have a, um, a learner, if you like, centered or and the teacher helping the learner to learn better, whether using technology, whether using paper, uh, paperwork, whatever the, the means or the tools. I think that the pedagogy that works with the learner is the most efficient one. Uh, is uh, If you have a, a good style, if you have a good way to, to teach, that's it. If technology is there to help you, it's okay. But if it's there to hinder or to block your, your goals or to have obstacles between you and reaching your goals, I think that technology is there not only a, a help, it is a hindrance. So it's no use. It's useless to have technology. I don't want to take much time from our students. Uh, I repeat or iterate, reiterate my uh, real pleasure and honor to have Sibuz again with us. Thank you very much from the deepest of our hearts. Thank you, Sayyid. Now I give the floor to uh, our students. Uh, Iman? Yes. 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 Hello, yeah. everyone. So once again, I'm very delighted to be part of this webinar series. 
Thank you very much, dear Professor Buzian, for such a great and beneficial presentation. So I want to comment on what Professor Sandy has mentioned earlier. And he said that technology may replace men. But I guess that technology is not meant to replace men, but technology in the hands of great teachers can be transformational. And I have a question to Professor Abdelmajid Buzian. Um, he mentioned in his Professor, you mentioned in your presentation that society is completely ready to implement to implement ICDs, but universities need updating. Can you please elaborate more on this point? And another question is that um, a lot of studies show that that the use of or students use social media for entertainment more than for studies. And one of your studies, sir, in 2010, elaborated more on that. Now, I want to know, what do you think is your platoon solution to shift this media use from social to academic one? Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you, Iman. Thank you. Dear students. Hello, Professor Khalfa. Hello, uh, dear professors. Thank you very much, Professor uh, Buzian, for your very informative and formative presentation. I think you are uh, seeing... Yes, are you? Abdul Hassan Smail. Abdul Hassan Smail. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Uh, my question. Yes, yeah. I just want to comment, and, and I have a question for Professor Buzian. Uh, he said that many uh, efforts have been made uh, from the part on the part of the government to integrate ICT in education, and many programs have been launched. To, for, the, for, the, for integrating ICT in education. But my question is, uh, what about the teachers' attitudes and the students' attitudes towards the integration of ICT in education? Uh, let me clarify the point. I mean, uh, what does research suggest about the teachers' attitudes? Because we, as uh, the professors have been uh, saying before me, uh, the teachers uh, sometimes procrastinate, the teachers uh, apprehend, the teachers fear technology. So I, I would like to know about uh, the research that has been conducted before uh, that deals with the teachers' attitudes as well as the students' attitudes towards the integration of ICT in ELT education. Thank you very much, Professor Buzian. Thank you. Thank you. See, Hassan. Students, the floor is yours. Yeah? Sir? Uh, yes, good afternoon, sir. Yeah? The floor is yes. yours. Right, thank you. Um, uh, good afternoon, dear professors and dear colleagues. First, I would like to uh, thank Professor Al-Qadda enormously for allowing us to partake of such interesting webinars. And of course, I would like to address special thanks to Professor Buziani, as well as my dear colleagues uh, Yusra and, um, and uh, Naima for their informative and instructive uh, presentation. First, if you allow me, I would like to answer Professor uh, Kinzes, uh, Professor Kinzes Setani's uh, question uh, concerning how the integration of technology can uh, can help or can enhance the learning process and uh, change the role of the professor from a verbal textbook who is expected to uh, deliver all kinds of knowledge to a facilitator, a guide, or a monitor. All right, the integration of technology in a classrooms actually can democratize the access to information and the differentiate instruction, especially for students with special needs like the visually impaired or those who are slow at, at learning. So, of course, you know that there are some students who are conscientious, they are sharp and quick at cutting away any unnecessary information and they go straight to the right things. However, there are some students who are slow at learning. So, with the integration of technology in the classrooms, uh, those students actually may learn at their own pace. For example, with computers at their uh, disposal, they may click pause and restart. So they can learn at their own pace and then uh, 
they may memorize, until they memorize or grasp the, the lesson. This is how I see it, and correct me if I am wrong. Uh, then, if you allow me, I have an addition concerning how the teacher's uh, beliefs may affect the integration of technology in classrooms. Because I noted that there are, I noticed that there are some teachers who underpin the uh, student-centered or the learner-centered classrooms, whereas others uphold the teacher-centered classrooms. Nowadays, it's an established fact that teachers should drive forward the movement to infuse with technology students' learning and prepare them for collaborative workplace. In order to do so, it goes without saying that they must, of course, proactively search for their personalized training they need to make this work possible. Search, of course, for webinars that guide teachers through technology. Knock on the door, why not, of a helpful colleague. Keep an eye on blogs and social media to find teachers who actively use technology. It is time to bridge the digital divide and bring education into a full power of learning. So teachers are expected to integrate technology into instruction. We agree upon this with learner-centered beliefs. However, teacher beliefs and practices may differ. The contextual factors influencing the inconsistency must be identified. And the discrepancy, I think, between teachers' beliefs and teaching activities must vanish. Many studies have focused on technology as a means of enhancing learning. Moreover, many studies have focused on technology integration, uh, concluding that using technology in educational setting benefits students. However, most teachers only use technology to design instructional material or deliver lectures, but don't effectively integrate technology into teaching and learning. That is, only few teachers have utilized technology as learning device or required students to use technology. Some studies identified a lack of resources such as equipment and successful experiences and negative attitudes and beliefs as a rationals accounting for the insufficient technology incorporation. However, even when teachers have sufficient successful experiences with technology, they do, they do not necessarily incorporate technology into instruction or are unwilling to integrate technology into teaching activities. So barriers hindering technology integration, I think, can be categorized into external and internal barriers. External barriers such as lack of equipment, training, and support can be simply overcome by adequate funding and training and via government policies or government supports. Internal barriers related to teachers' beliefs are key variable. Many researchers demonstrated that teacher beliefs play a critical role in successful technology integration or influence technology use indirectly. You know that each teacher holds a set of beliefs that determine priorities for pedagogical knowledge and how students acquire knowledge. Ertner, Ertner sorry, in 2005 investigated teacher beliefs about teaching and learning and called these beliefs pedagogical. A common a common used distinction in studies is associated with two prototypical ideologies, teacher-centered or teaching-oriented beliefs and the learner-centered or learning-oriented beliefs. The teacher-centered belief is based on assumption of knowledge delivery that resembles traditional teaching methods and underscores the importance of knowledge reproduction, while the learner-centered belief emphasizes students' responsibility for learning and is focused, and is focused on knowledge construction and how students are induced to work and learn together. In terms of acquiring knowledge, teacher, teachers' beliefs about teaching and learning can be broadly classified in the knowledge transmission category or knowledge construction category. Thus, teacher beliefs encompass teacher-centered and learner-centered pedagogy or pedagogy sorry, pedagogical beliefs. Recent studies demonstrated that teacher beliefs were a critical indicator of technology use in the classroom. Teacher beliefs about teaching are referred to as preferred ways of teaching. Technology incorporation in 
wolves perceptions and therefore teacher pedagogical beliefs about technology integration can influence teaching methods when using technology in other words Teachers using technology during instruction rely on their pedagogical belief to practice large amount of information from numerous sources may confuse students. Thus, teachers need to design learner-centered activities that engage students while processing knowledge and foster the ability to think critically about information. Traditional lecture-based teaching doesn't always help students inter-analyze complex information. So, as mentioned, yes. teachers' beliefs yeah. affect... Yes, Professor, just, just uh, less than one minute. Teacher beliefs uh, affect, uh, affect teaching activities. Moreover, constructive beliefs are positively correlated with the use of technology in a classroom, whereas traditional be beliefs are negatively correlated with technology use in a classroom. So okay. accordingly, teachers are expected to retain their learner uh, all right, centered beliefs. Okay. You, and I, thank I, you. I'm sorry for being long. Okay, uh, we have another student, uh, I think Manel. Manel? Yes, sir. Yes, try to be uh, brief, Manel. Okay, thank you so much. Well, uh, as far as my research is concerned, I found that when talking about ICT at Moulay Ismail University, we have to discuss it from three different angles. Well, the first, is the three types of teachers. <laughs> Since I have conducted some interviews with Moulay Smaid University English teachers, I have discovered that the, there are three types. The first type, those who, who have a positive attitude towards ICT and who are welcoming the idea of ICT implementation in classrooms and who admit its effective role in enhancing students' level. And the second type, those in between, they accept it, but they don't really uh, want to use it. And then we have the last type, those who don't accept it at all. And this might answer the uh, question of my friend Bil Hassan, which is concerned with the attitude of teachers. So we have here three types of attitudes of uh, teachers, right? And then the second angle concerned with the limitations that face the integration of ICT in classrooms at Moulay Ismail University. We have the lack of teacher skills in using ICT. Professors need training on the effective use of educational technologies so as to help them get rid of the fear which is often associated with, the, um, with their hesitation to make use of ICT. Then we have the age of teachers which has already been mentioned by some of you teachers, uh, professors. And then we have uh, the age, as I have said, professors are non-digital natives. So uh, it might be difficult for them to deal with the new technologies due to the age matter. Therefore, they might need more time to be able to use uh, a specific ICT tool for their teaching. Then we have the subject areas. In the English department also, uh, there are different modules which some of them need ICT more than the others. Then we have the teacher's rejection of ICT, uh, which is uh, a very bad thing, which, is, uh, which I have found that teachers do not really want to use the ICT. They found it useless and they found it, they found it um, meaningless because they, they think that students are less concentrated when they are using technologies. They give all their concent concentration to the tools rather than the uh, information. And then we have the huge number of students in the groups. That is the new issue that in the world of ICT obstacles that, that is discovered at Polizma University. Yeah, we have a huge you mean, Manel, you mean that most teachers and uh, students, according to your study, are resistant to uh, wide use of ICT? Yeah? Yes, there are Is a lot of obstacles which hinder the are, use of ICT. Okay, and there are constraints hindering the use, yeah. successful use and, uh, of ICT and implementation of uh, change. Uh, 
Um, yes, okay, sir. Manel. Okay, so the idea is uh, clear. I will try to give the floor to Professor Abujid Bouziem. And uh, thank you, Professor, for your uh, patience. Uh, people like you liked your presentation. So uh, this uh, number of questions reflects the richness of the presentation. And uh, I have just uh, myself, I have one, just one question I would like to share with Professor Bouzien and uh, with my colleagues uh, who have kindly joined us uh, on this virtual event. We are teachers, practitioners, professors are always talking about learners' autonomy, independence, and um, authenticity, etc. I, I have a question in my mind that I would like to voice today, uh, which is related to teachers, professors, um, intellectual, professional, pedagogical convictions, and the uh, commitment and the teachers, uh, practitioners, professors, sense of independence, autonomy, authenticity, engagement, um, etc. Because implementing change, coping with ever-changing challenges and innovations in the field of education, requires that teachers uh, and or teachers training all the which is not enough uh, should develop some sort of autonomy independence and the responsibility to instill in students these traits of character these values that sense of initiative, that sense of responsibility and authenticity, that sense of critical thinking and creativity. Um, four years ago, I asked my dearest professor on earth, Professor Mohamed Wakrim, I remembered him of his article, of the article he published in 1988, The Neglected Spaces need some air, that is autonomy, uh, independence. And I asked him at the time, how much do you, th how much do you think professor, how much air do you think professor teachers need to, uh, to work on the ideals of education? Um, thank you, Professor Boussien, once again for your patience. Uh, the floor is yours to react to, you know, all questions that one can think and be raised in one webinar, in one seminar. Because you are, you know, people like me, like you, and the presentation has been very, very, very interesting and thoughtful. The floor is yours, Professor Bouzien. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sam Drahim. And I would like to thank, uh, to thank you all for the uh, very interesting questions. And I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go through one question by question, but I'm going to, to, to answer in general because all these questions are interrelated and they will explain why. Now, uh, uh, when I when I raised the changes throughout history and the changes of technology and all those changes in the paradigm of education, my idea was that we have to change. It's not, it's not a choice. It's not something that we are going to negotiate now and then we can say, are we going to adopt ICT or are we going to leave it? No, no. We should adopt it because let me simplify that. I will give you a very simplistic, a really simplistic image. Uh, 
you, you all have children, you all have brothers, you all have sisters, and you are young. Some of us here are young enough uh, to, to, to think about your daily, daily activities. How much technology do you use in your daily activities? If we separate that in the classroom and then we say, okay, no technology in the classroom, no technology outside the classroom, what's going to happen? We are going to interrupt the lives of the young people because the young people are immersed in technology. And when they come to our classroom, we are going to say, oh, no, no, no technology. We are going back to traditional teaching. Here we are interrupting their process of learning because they are used to the new processes of, of, of learning. That, that's one premise that they want to, 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 uh, uh, to, to mention here. The other premise is that we're not discussing anymore, anymore I say, the benefits of technology on learning or on teaching. That's it, it's done, it's there. We start from that premise that technology is necessary for learning and for teaching. But what we are trying to do is we are trying to get how to get it more effectively. So that's that, that's that's the answer now. The answer the question is not anymore. Are we going to use it? Are we going to to do this? No, no. The, the question is uh, here. We we start from the premise that we are going to use technology, but how are we going to use it? And I talked about the process of normalization. I will just elaborate on that. So, you know, when you have something new, and what happens is that you get the new thing, you, you, you train yourself in using the new technology. And there is a kind of stage where you appropriate the technology. And in the process of appropriation, it's then when it becomes part of your life. It's just like the telephone these days, just like the email. The email at a certain time was a kind of something that we used to, uh, to consult once a, day, once a week or twice a week or minimum three times a week. But these days, the first thing we do, even before we brush our, our teeth, is we, we, we check technology, we check what is new, uh, because it's part, we appropriated the technology. And the process of appropriation is a very slow process. It's not, it, it is not done uh, uh, from in one day, but uh, it, it takes time to appropriate the uh, t t technology. Uh, 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 there has been uh, there have been many questions about equal access, about how to train teachers, etc. So this is exactly what the policy is about. When I'm talking about the policy, it's simply it, that policy should look into number one: do the students have technology? If they don't, how can we remedy that? That's that's that that's part of the policy. Another part of the policy is when we say, do we have digital content? How are we going to deliver it? When? How much of our teaching workload will be delivered online? It's also part of, of the policy. And what type of uh, quality we should observe before saying that we are using technology in our teaching? Here it's part again of the policy. And in all that, so this policy is one package and we cannot just pick and choose or we cannot uh, disseminate it in a kind of uh, uh, bits and pieces. No, no, it's a whole package. And if it is normalized, if, if, if it is institutionalized, sorry, if it's part of the institution, we forget about the age. I know, uh, well, I understand that some people have difficulties, but those people, it, it's simply because they are not digital natives. And in, in, in one of the research, in, in at least three research studies, we, we compared, and, and in one of them, it's 1,050 uh, teachers that we get from primary 
secondary, middle school, and high school from all the different regions in Morocco and from different ages, gender, etc. We calculated beliefs, we calculated attitudes, we calculated self efficacy. <coughs> self efficacy is that type of you know, is that confidence that you have when you are using technology. I mean, the difference between me and, and, and many of you is that I have the self-efficacy. I have developed it. I, I, I'm not afraid of new software programs. I'm not afraid of when Zoom came, came out. It, it, it's because I know what video conferencing is. I know the components of video conferencing. It didn't frighten me. So uh, once you develop this, and then you have that self-efficacy uh, attitude towards, uh, or you have that self-confidence, it, it's then when you say, I am appropriating the technology, it's then when it is normalized in your life, it's, but it's not normalized in your workplace yet. For the reasons I am, I, am, I am citing, and those reasons are more related to institutional uh, aspects more than any personal aspects. Now, with the uh, uh, when 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 lecturing etc with the face to face etc so l l let me tell you that there are programs these days which address how to give a class online and where you can have eye contact where you can have the position what position you should take if they go in those details and they know of programs that give you all those tips very small tips you know tiny things you should stand up, you should use your gestures as if you are in the classroom, you should use your eye contacts, you should, uh, and, 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 and in, in some video conferencing uh, uh, programs, you, you can run, uh, uh, you can run uh, polls. And I don't run polls in my classes. What I do is from uh, within 15 minutes of lecturing, uh, I do, I give some four or five multiple choice questions in which in which the students will demonstrate that they are following me or that they haven't understood so that they can adjust right away it's just as if you are in a face to face and you to make it live does not mean that there is i know that there is a screen between us but you feel that some people are more are more live than others and and you feel that that, that there is life in and and one of the you should remember that one of the uh, the two conditions of using technology. There are two conditions. One is usability, and the other one is sociability. Usability simply means that you are you are using technology that everybody understands. Sociability is that you create life inside the virtual the virtual world. Uh, we still have some two minutes to go, and they will try to, to, to go very, very quickly. When I said so, uh, society is ready and universities are not, so I, I, I published an article talking about e-readiness. And we did e-readiness in universities, and we, it, it, it takes into account many things that happen in society. We found that society uses technology enough and those indicators by which we measure the e-readiness exist in society, but the universities still lag behind because those areas in which universities should work are overlooked at the universities these days. So I, uh, uh, I can send the uh, 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 the, the article to say Abdurrahim to dispatch it to the students if they are interested in those. The other thing is, uh, uh, well, the teachers' attitudes and the students' attitudes. We collected enough data from teachers of all sorts of, of all walks of life, from all the students, including in popular, uh, in popular areas. They all showed their positive attitudes towards the use of technology, and they all showed they believe in it they believe in it and we have no doubt in those in those matters uh, uh, then uh, let me just take it from from there and finish uh, because we are uh, it, it, it's going to, uh, to, to to disappear in in a while uh, and just to say that uh, please uh, we just uh, uh, make sure that we are talking about how to Yes, I will, I, will, I will just carry on. Uh, we, we, I was talking about attitudes. attitudes. Uh, I mean, no one is questioning these days 
the value or the added value of technology in our in in our uh, in in our teaching and learning. But but as I as as I told you, please do not confuse using technology with solving problems or with improving. Technology can improve things if you use it effectively. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if you have a certain pedagogy that you are following, and then you know what, where you are leading, where you are heading for, it's done when you guarantee that technology is doing a good job, but you are doing a good job through technology. It's not the technology that overwhelms us, but it's us that and 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 uh, can i just re uh, reiterate that uh, opening again whether technology will replace teachers or teachers will uh, etc no no uh, uh, i i don't i don't adhere to this to this line of thought because as i said it is us that drive technology it's us that will make good use of technology, and it's the pedagogy that will stay there forever. And in that matter, we, we gave an answer a long time ago, and we said that technology will let the teacher who do not use technology. Thank you. I mean, that's, that's the answer. Uh, one more thing, if you don't mind, see, see, see Abraham, just to, uh, to, to, to answer one of the questions. Yeah, uh, I, I ran some 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 uh, some uh, uh, research studies uh, on different populations: private schools, uh, public schools, university, high school, etc. To know how students use uh, uh, social media, and 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 I found that. Uh, I mean, I found it's just one way of of saying it, but we found because it's a team. We found that. Uh, students use uh, those social media more for entertainment than for their studies. And even those, those media, okay, so now th th this is very interesting. I even within those media, they use uh, those that do not require writing or reading. So if, if there is a reading involved, students avoid that. If there is writing invo involved, students avoid these, these, these types of media. What they use is where there is spoken, I mean, I mean speaking, and where there is watching. So uh, here again, uh, it gives us an idea of how we can gear our teaching. I, I, I'm not saying that w w w we should be you know, lenient, lenient enough so that whatever the students would like, we will do it. No, no. But I investigated more. Why, why are the students more, uh, this attractive, this attracted to Facebook and to the social media? The only answer that I have come across for the time being, I'm still investigating the area, is that in Facebook or in social media, there is an immediate feedback, immediate. I mean, you write something at one o'clock in the morning, at two o'clock in the morning, somebody, if you say, I'm going to commit suicide at two o'clock, somebody will say, hey, wait, we're doing it together, please. All right? So it's, it's this cynical thing up to this, uh, uh, up, up, up to, up, I mean, up, up to these bad things, but there is always somebody there who provides feedback. And that feedback is not, Again, the difference between what we do in the classroom is that we ask students, well, look at this again, and, and, and I'm going to talk about it in the assessment session, because that assessment, again, has a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of issues. In, in real life, is there anybody who tells you that I am writing this topic, please comment on it? In real life, it doesn't happen like that. I comment just because I want. Because, and, and there are things that I read and they don't comment. It's not because I don't want them. It's just because I don't want to comment. But in our case, in teaching and learning, these are some of the things that we impose on our students. Well, for pedagogical reasons. I'm not saying don't do it. No, no, please do it. And do it more often because we are teaching. 
and they're learning. But uh, could you please give them some air, as you said, see Abdurrahim, when you have, for example, forums of discussion, give one forum, leave one form of discussion to the students only. They run it, they look at it, they respond to one another, and then you will say. So, uh, interaction is very interesting, and it's very interesting in, 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 uh, in, in languages as well. So, in languages, if there, if there is no interaction, what are we teaching? How can the students demonstrate that they are learning? How can they show what they're learning? How can they practice their language so that they can make mistakes and then we can identify those mistakes and you can work out the, the remedy work for those mistakes? That, that's, that's obvious that we should have some interaction there. But uh, that interaction, if it is spontaneous, it's good. Once it is imposed again, we should make it, we should impose it, but with sociability, please. Sociability simply means that you give the message in a kind way so that the students will feel that you are not imposing things, you are just, you want to know. And even in, in, in real communication, in authentic communication, uh, in our classrooms of, 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 of English, we ask some questions which are, which are not relevant at all to the students. For example, asking them, is today, is today Monday? It's just to get, no, it isn't. No, that's not, I mean, what kind of question is this? I ask them some real and genuine questions. It's just because you don't know, and then we ask questions because we don't know the answer. But if you ask a question to which you know the answer, you miss the point. So it's these practices that make good, uh, uh, good pedagogy online or offline. So what works offline will work online, but it's just because if, if it works online, it's because we have adequate technology and adequate technology, again, is not the business of the teacher. It's the business of the government and it's part of the policy. It's part of the policy for the government to give us the platforms to pay for the uh, for, for, for the uh, the software programs for everything we need to do this business. Thank you very much indeed. It was all my pleasure to be among you today, and I hope that we can call this a day. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Abdi uh, Bouzien, um, for your insightful uh, presentation. You, we have learned a lot from you. See, Abdulmajid, you are always a real source of inspiration and positive energy. We are happy to listen to you, to see you, to hear from you, and to hear good news about you. We like you all. Thank uh, you. I would like, and uh, we will have another chance, another opportunity to enjoy another uh, seminar with you uh, June the 12th on assessment, online, online assessment, on assessment, particularly online assessment, which is one of the aching question uh, issues uh, and one of the aching implications of what we have been talking uh, uh, about. I would like to thank my colleagues and uh, it is the first time more than 15. I hope I will not forget anyone. We are Professor Muktasim. Uh, professors, without repeating Professor, Professor. Muktasim, Benis, Mohib, Sandy, Slawi, Madani, Gordo, Karima Bliriti, uh, Bilfakir, uh, Samia, Wardani, <laughs> from Casablanca, Aziz Bakali. Yes, Madani Mohib, Professor Bulm Qaddam from the, from the Department of Philosophy, the faculty of uh, Dharmeraz uh, Fes, and uh, yes, Professor Bulm Qaddam, and Professor, uh, Mr. Uh, our colleague and friend Miliani, uh, Ardwan Miliani, uh, President, our young President of MAID Fes, Abdelghani Jouel Arbi Arbawi from the board, uh, yes, I hope 
Professor uh, Tayyip Gordou. Have I forgotten anyone, please? Aziz. Aziz. Aziz Aqsbi. Aqsbi. Uh, from and Aziz, uh, and Aziz Bqali, Muhib Mamun. Yes, uh, thank you very much. And uh, excuse me if yeah, I have forgotten someone. <laughs> Professor Sandy, yes, uh, the chair of our department. Thank you very much for your encouragement. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, attendance. I, I miss but, you. So I miss you so much. My teachers at the Department of English and others, I am really happy and thank you very much, uh, our friend and uh, colleague, C. Uh, Bouzian, because uh, this, you are that leader who can bring people together. You have thank brought you together. Much. Thank yes. you very much, Abrahim. I would like to thank around you. Yeah, I, I, I would like to thank Professor Sedeni from Sais. Okay, she 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 is both from Sais and from the Harbeiras. Professor Sedeni, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, my students, for your great job you have been doing, in spite of the uh, difficulties and the. Uh, resulted from this corona uh, crisis. Thank you, my PhD students who are attending this seminar. Uh, and uh, thank you very much, Abdelji. Thank you. And, and I would like Good to thank the students. Friends. I yeah. would like to thank our students for their wonderful presentation. And I would like to congratulate them on, uh, on, uh, on the uh, 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 the uh, information they have collected and uh, I wish them very good luck for all the students and the, the doctoral students and we meet very soon inshallah on the assessment issue so with this I would like to thank you very much Sir Brahim for having for having organized this and all the people who are with us here thank you very much Thank and you very much, Sir Keep safe it's and keep healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank